Welcome to the fourth and final AO training video. In this presentation, we will walk through all the things you have learned to do so far and turn the entries and corrected times into results. Results are made from many inputs. Pre-race, we have entries, scratches, and deck changes of events. Post-race, we have timing console times, timer sheets, place judge order of finish, and disqualifications. We bundle those together in the meet management software to create final results. The first additional input after a race is to make sure times were assigned to the correct athletes. It happens often that swimmers swim in the wrong lanes, especially younger swimmers. There is an option in meet management software to adjust swimmers' lanes. If you drag and drop the swimmer to the right place prior to importing the times from the timing system, there is no problem. It will be assigned correctly. If it is done after, it can be the case that times get locked into a swimmer in the database and you will have to write down the data and enter manually. In the event run screen in the meet management software, you can enter disqualifications. Check the DQ box and use the drop down menu to assign the call as it appears on the DQ slip you are given for the athlete. Another consideration is what happens when swimmers do not compete. These are referred to as no-shows. You must know from your meet packet if your meet has a penalty for failing to appear. If your meet does not have a penalty, there is no problem. You should check all no-shows to make sure you do not have watch times. It, is, it does happen that in some circumstances, neither pads nor buttons are available. What if your meet does have a penalty? While these meets are rare, they do exist, and all championship meets have some version of the penalty. In that case, the penalty for a missed swim usually involves some sort of bar from a future event or events. In this case, you are often tasked to look up the future events and write a DQ slip for the referee. Each penalty meet will feature some sort of workflow for this, and you need to discuss this with the meet referee early. At a penalty meet, it is also important to understand the process for declared false starts. A DFS is a way for a swimmer to legally miss an event without being penalized. Normally, athletes or coaches notify an official, a CJ, deck ref, or even you. This is recorded as a type of disqualification in the meet management software to account for no result being entered but no penalty being enforced. Rarely, you will be in a situation where no data seems available to you. Timing system failure tied to failures of the timers can happen. You must figure out a way to get a time because you cannot make the swimmer re-swim and they need to have a result. First, let the meet referee know. They may be able and willing to help. Look for outside data. Coach had a time, someone took a video you can time, or maybe the head timer caught it and didn't let you know. You can even look at the time faster and slower than the athlete with no time according to the order of finish and make an assumption. You must find a way to create a result. Normally, ties are not an issue. Swimmers get the time, and if there are points, they are allotted between the tied athletes as the average of the proper place points. In a prelim final meet, sometimes ties need to be worked out for the purpose of de determining which athlete moves on in which place. Swim-offs determine this, but you need to break the tie in the meet management software. Meet management software has a tab for JD or judge's decision. You need to enter the place in the JD heat place column to break the tie. When all these things are in place, you are ready to create results. Make sure all your DQs are logged and that your NS and DFS counts are correct and score the event. Every meet will print different results depending on how the results are posted and announced. If you are doing awards, remember to print labels. A lot of things go into creating results for an athlete, and as an AO, they are your responsibility to track. It is not as hard as it likely feels right now, and practice actually makes it easy. So this is the final of the three admin videos. You've now seen a meet from entry to conclusion. 
Now is a good time to refresh a few important points. Learn the best practices from your trainers. Experience is key to being a good admin, and they will be happy to share theirs. As you get more comfortable, learn to anticipate problems to minimize their impact. Always be approachable to those with questions. Don't take questions personally. Everything we do on every level is about the athletes. Always document what you do so that questions can be answered. Always keep your meet referee in the loop with any problems, and they will have your back. There's really no way to remember everything in this video. We don't want you to worry about that. Your training is a program designed to integrate all its parts. These videos are just one step in the process, and as you continue your training, things will come together. Even very experienced admins are still always learning. You will master the craft if you put the time in to do so. Thank you for volunteering your time. We hope you have a better understanding of what it takes to be an official. If you have any technical issues or questions about training, please feel free to reach out to the committee.